The word division has both positive and negative connotations, doesn't it? We say diversity is our strength, but isn't diversity the opposite of unification? Think of the slogan, United we stand, divided we fall. It's our ability to come together and coordinate our efforts into a unified voice that gives the ARA its strength, right? So why did the ARA evolve to become an association composed of individual divisions? Perhaps the answer lies in the ability of the ARA to act as a whole and as an entity composed of multiple parts. Division within an organization brings on risks, as with the saying, divide and conquer. Yet, inasmuch as the ARA derives its strength from representing industry with a unified voice, it also functions quite effectively as an organization representing the unique interests of its divisions. And this is the paradox of the ARA. When we look back at history, we see that although the ARA as a whole has thrived, divisions themselves have come and gone. This is how the ARA survives. As the environment changes, its parts adapt. New divisions are formed and old obsolete ones disappear, or are transformed into new ones, thus allowing the ARA to evolve with the times. In this chapter of the history of the ARA, we will look at some of the divisions you never even knew had existed. We have all heard the story before. The ARA began as a group representing service station owners. One voice representing one industry. And in the early years, they had experienced very rapid expansion and achieved many things for their members. So what prompted the founding fathers of the ARA to want to diversify and expand into other industry sectors? Why not just stay as they were? There are several reasons for why the ARA created divisions to better reflect the interests of their members. Industry was becoming more and more specialized as vehicle technology advanced. The ARA evolved as a division of the Retail Merchants Association, or RMA, which because of the diversity of its member base was divided into divisions, each specializing in their respective markets. However, one very specific reason for the ARA to create its first division came as a result of the ARA wishing to open dialogue with insurance companies. In late 1954, a special division, the Body Shop Division, was formed offering representation for the auto metal trades, as it was known back then. Two years earlier, the ARA and insurance adjusters had begun working toward the development of a standard estimating worksheet for collision repairs. As a result of this effort for improving conditions within the auto metal industry, the ARA formed a close alliance with insurance adjusters, and from this came about the desire to create a whole new wing of the ARA, called the Body Shop Division. The Body Shop Division was the ARA's first division, and Bob Brody became the first ever division chairman. ARA divisions have often come about through a desire to solve a problem or a crisis. They have also been formed as a result of the desire to open dialogue or consultation with industry, as was the case with forming of the ARA's Power Sports Division. In 2009, the provincial government was proposing changes to the graduated licensing program and had approached the ARA for consultation. As an association representing the automotive industry, the ARA had never considered industries outside of the automotive industry. The ARA had formed a working group of the power sports dealers headed by Mark Smith, then from Western Power Sports in Langley. Mark had managed to get enough interest from power sports dealers, and the division was officially declared as a new division of the ARA in 2010. Mark served as the division chair until 2014. The division remains small, but it is steadily growing and has become a recognized voice with government. In 2018, the power sports division was renamed the Motorcycle and Power Sports Dealers Division. We all know the ARA as it is today, 
an association comprised of eight industry subsectors called divisions. But it didn't always look that way. In fact, had history taken a different direction, our divisions may look a lot different, or the association itself may look different than what it is today. In the 1960s and 70s, we saw the biggest expansion of division activity, but not all divisions flourished, nor did they all remain part of the association. Some came about in response to a need. Some left the association and then came back again later. And some morphed into new divisions as industry evolved. And some just folded up and never to be heard from again. Divisions such as the Towing and Recovery Division and the Collision Repair Division and the Auto Recycling Division have stood the test of time, and we will talk about these later. For this chapter, let's take a look at some of those divisions that didn't make it, those that came and went, and even a few that came back again. The Parking Lot Division John Sloan was the first chairman of the Parking Lot Division which formed as a division of the ARA in 1958. Their main goal was to deal with mutual problems directly related to parking. In 1959, the new parking division was successful in carrying out their objectives of improving the position of the parking lot operator. They were successful in organizing the group, receiving recognition, having their own representative, and they won the right to have independent parking lot operators bid on operation of city-owned lots. They presented new ideas to civic officials regarding public parking. And they started the P for Parking program, adopted by cities across BC since 1961. The division remained active in the ARA until 1968. The Auto Wrecking Division Henry Ford was actually one of the very first auto recyclers. His plant in Baton Rouge was the first to begin reusing and remanufacturing parts for the OEM supply chain. In the 1930s and 40s, auto recycling grew into an actual industry, and many began in empty fields as graveyards for wrecked cars, hence the name wreckers. In Richmond, they are still classified as pawnbrokers, in 1962, Don Doughton formed the Auto Wreckers Division in an effort to improve their image with the public. In 1965, Auto Wreckers changed their name to the Used Auto and Truck Parts Division and John Stewart became their first chairman. The division name was changed again in 1989 to the BC Auto Recyclers, or BCAR, as it is known today. The Auto Trim Division some divisions never even made it out of the gate. Ben Spiegel became the first and only chairman of the Auto Trim Division, added in 1961. Auto Trim was an industry that grew out of body shops. The purpose of the division was to work with upholstery and trim shops. They created very valuable flat rate charts for auto upholsterers, for seat covers, convertible tops, etc. Unfortunately, it only lasted a year. In 1960, Ray Brunt formed the Frame and Alignment Division. The division completely revised and republished the flat rate charts for front-end alignment work and the special flat rate charts dealing with shop specialty work. The division never really caught on and it folded several years later. On June 29, 1970, the Body Shop Division met to announce plans to develop a new certified program for body shops. The program was intended to assure the motoring public of more efficient service and a higher standard for quality of workmanship. The program grew and certified body shops were soon becoming recognized as a group within the ARA. They eventually became their own division in 1972 and even held their own golf tournament. In 1973, a new province-wide advertising and public relations campaign was adopted by the certified shops, but the new campaign caught a lot of members off guard and they quit the program. The new marketing campaign actually encouraged consumers to complain in hopes of raising the profile of the program. 
But many members felt that the new campaign would actually instigate a whole slew of unfounded complaints. The division argued that complaints were valuable and that the ARA would handle them appropriately. Up until now, the certified shops were largely unrecognized by the public. The new campaign was meant to help create a permanent market for the certified body shops. In 1974, Don Dean took over as division chairman, but the program ultimately failed to gain traction with the creation of ICBC. The Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Division Carl Weigel formed the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Division and became its first chairman in 1969. The purpose of the division was to promote ethics and standards in the rebuilding trade. In 1972, the division developed an ARA certified guarantee program. Similar in scope to the one that the body shops created several years earlier, any division member willing to conduct his or her business to the specifications under the Code of Ethics was eligible for certification. This division came to an end in 1982 when the entire industry fell into economic recession and shops were forced to close. The Used Car and Truck Dealer Division We all know of the licensed motor dealer division that we have today but most members had never heard of the Used Car and Truck Dealer Division, not even the pioneers of today's Licensed Motor Dealer Division. In 1978, a small group of independent used car dealers met at the ARA's offices to discuss a proposed set of regulations which apply to all motor vehicle dealers in BC. The Ministry of Consumer and Corporate Affairs gave the dealers an opportunity to suggest any changes or improvements to the new regulations. The ARA sent out a letter asking all used car dealers in BC if they were interested in joining the ARA. An overwhelmingly large number of dealers responded to a survey confirming their desire to see an official used car and truck dealers division of the ARA, so the ARA approved this division on March 20th, 1980. The division lasted until 1987 and was eventually replaced by the new Independent Auto Dealers Division, founded by Ed Hendricks in 1993. The division name was changed again in 2008 to the Licensed Motor Dealer Division. And then there were those divisions that came, went, and then came back again. The Auto Glass Division In 1973, the ARA formed an Auto Glass Division to handle automotive glass concerns throughout the province. Since the ARA was designated as the representative for the automotive industry, it was deemed fitting that they should also be the ones conducting any negotiations on behalf of the auto glass trade. In 1978, the division debated a new rate structure, negotiating with ICBC. The auto glass division had suffered a setback that year when negotiating rates with ICBC but poor rates were seen to be less a result of heavy-handedness by ICBC and more the cutthroat attitudes of the industry itself. Many in the glass industry used giveaways as a means of trying to gain a greater percentage of the market. This had an adverse effect in that it gave ICBC justification for not paying higher rates to an industry that could afford to give things away. During this time, another Autoglass Association had formed, called the Autoglass Dealers Association. They came into the fold of the ARA for a brief period during the 1980s, but then left to go their separate ways again after the ARA Glass Division disbanded. But in 1996, the ARA established a new Autoglass Division. The new division, spearheaded by Anvil Al Fuller, was established after the Auto Glass Dealers Association folded. The Garage and Service Station Division You may well think that the Mechanical Repair Division, or MRD, is the ARA's oldest division, but in fact, you would be wrong. As you recall, the founding fathers of the ARA were indeed all service station operators, and so it was service station owners, not mechanical repair shops, that made up the origins of the ARA. 
In 1983, the Garage and Service Station Division, the original division that began it all, was disbanded. In its place, the ARA formed separate divisions, the Mechanical Repair Division and the Retail Gasoline Dealers Division. The Retail Gasoline Dealers Division disbanded several years later, as service stations became more profitable by selling chips and pop than repairing automobiles. Then, in 1995, an alternate fuels division was added to the ARA, but it operated under the umbrella of the existing Mechanical Repair Division until it disappeared several years later. What happened to this division? Well, there was a lot of hope pinned on propane as a new alternative fuel source for automobiles. Propane and natural gas looked promising at the time, and many company fleets and repair shops invested in this technology. But new technology doesn't always catch on like we expect, and the division went the way of the dodo bird like so many other ideas and initiatives. We hope you enjoyed this look at the history of the ARA. Thank you for watching.